Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new metrics that come built in in .NET 8 and how you can use them to scrape them and build very pretty dashboards like this one. Not only that, I'm also going to show you how you can create your own custom metrics using the new APIs that were added in .NET 8. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Alright, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple weather API here, but I have changed a little bit. This is not exactly the built-in weather API. So here we accept a city and a number of days that I want to get the weather for and how long I want the forecast to be in the future. And it still generates in-memory fake weathers, but it has a bit more functionality. It also adds a bit of a fake delay over here to simulate a real API call to maybe some other service. If I quickly go ahead and I run this, let me just show you what you're going to expect in the front end. So I API is running and I have Postman over here. So if I try to get the weather for Zurich for five days, I can call that and I'm going to get Zurich and then a bunch of forecasts. And if I say, for example, uh, one, then I'm going to get one and so on. Now, the metrics we're going to take a look at this video is sort of an extension on what has been happening with the whole Open Telemetry initiative. So it's going to build on top of that. Now, what I want is I want to go to NuGet and I want to install two NuGet packages. Since I want to get metrics for hosting the whole .NET hosting framework, and then ASP.NET Core, I'm going to install opentelemetry.extensions.hosting, which at this stage is pre-release. So if you don't have pre-release enabled, you're going to see the old version. Here we have 1.6.0 alpha 1. And then because I want to scrape these metrics with something called Prometheus, which is sort of a time series database that can store these metrics and then expose them to other areas as data sources, I'm going to go ahead and install the opentelemetry.exporter.prometheus.asp.net core. Again, this is pre-release. And if you actually uncheck this at this point, you won't see a non-pre-release version because this will be the first one to be published. So I'm going to go ahead and just install that as well. And now with these two packages in place, I'm going to go to the program.cs and do all of my setup. Now, the first thing I need to do is I want to say builder.services.add open telemetry. And then on that, I'm going to say with metrics, because we're going to be exposing metrics here, and we're going to do some configuration. Since we will be using Prometheus to scrape them, I'm going to say over here, x dot add Prometheus exporter. I will explain what that does in a second. We're actually going to see exactly what it does. Now, since I have the exporter in place, I'm going to go ahead and add some meters. So I'm going to say add meter into the list of subscribe meters. And I'm going to add two of them, the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Hosting and the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Server.Kestrel. This should be enough. And if I just go ahead and I break them so you can see them better, this should be enough for what we're going to demonstrate here. And then because I want to actually expose the duration of the request I'm going to be processing, I'm going to say x.add view over here. I'm going to give a name to that view. I'm going to call it request duration. And then to configure that view, I'm going to pass down an explicit bucket histogram configuration. Now, this goes a bit maybe too deep into metrics and how they're exposed. But basically what this will allow me to do is provide the boundaries I want for this uh, histogram metric stream. Now, with those in place, I can go all the way down here before the redirection and say app.map Prometheus scraping endpoint. This is an endpoint that our API will expose on the forest class metrics by default to allow for Prometheus to scrape and get those metrics that our API is exposing. So we're not really sending those metrics to Prometheus. We just say, if you want to take them, they're here, and then Prometheus will go and just get them and start storing them. Now, with these two things in place, I'm going to just rerun the API and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So the API should be running. I'm going to go ahead and just call it a few times. So I'm going to say one, two, three, for five requests, and then I'm going to go to the forest class metrics endpoint. I'm going to call that. And as you can see now, that is mapped using this line over here. And this will allow me to get things like current Kestrel connections, Kestrel connection duration, things like handshake duration, queued connections if I want them. I have scrolled the way down, current requests, TLS handshakes. We have tons and tons and tons of metrics. We now expose and Prometheus can come in and scrape them and store them and use them so we can do things with them, analyze them and visualize them. And now we're ready to start scraping those endpoints and start visualizing things in Grafana. Now, if you want the code in this video, you can become a Patreon and you can get the code. It will have all the Docker Compose files, all the Grafana dashboards, everything I'm going to be showing will be there. Now, for me to run this, what I'm going to do is I've already configured over here a Docker Compose with the API itself 
a bunch of different things over here, Prometheus, the Node Explorer, we have um, Grafana and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to say Docker Compose up and this will run my API, Prometheus, Grafana, the Node Explorer, a bunch of other things. So we're going to start downloading all of those images as you can see over here and build them. Once that is running, you can actually go to localhost 9090 over here and see Prometheus. And if we go to the status and then targets, you're going to see that our metrics endpoint over here is being uh, hit, is being scraped. So if I go and I call it, the API is running and I can see all those requests, all that data, and it is being successfully scraped by Prometheus. And it means that I can go to Grafana and I can say admin here and then foo bar over here and log in. And once I do that, I can go to uh, explore and I can search for a metric. And if I search, for example, for Kestrel, I'm going to see all the Kestrel related metrics and do well, anything I want with them. For example, if I want to say current connections, I can do that. I can run the query and I can see over here, I had three over here, two over here. And if I go ahead and I keep spamming this, maybe I'm going to get more connections. And I've configured this to scrape those metrics every five seconds. So if I go here and I run this again, we might see a connection increase. But keep in mind, that those connections are opening and closing. So we might not really see much of a difference. As you can see, it was three and now it is two. But this is not everything I want to show you. In fact, I want to go to dashboards and I want to import a couple of dashboards that you can grab and use for your own purposes, just as a getting started mechanism. And these actually come from um, James, the person who also made um, JSON.net. So I modified them a bit to make them work with the latest preview and we're going to go ahead and import them. If you want to grab them, if you grab the code, you're going to find them under dashboards. So I'm going to grab the first one over here and just import it. So I'm going to select the Prometheus source to basically say this is where you can get the data from and import that. We're going to talk about what we see here in a second. And then I'm going to add this endpoint one as well. So back to dashboards, import, paste this here, select the source and then import it. So let's go to the main dashboard. This is all driven based of data that is coming from that running API. Now, because if I just call this API a few times, and as you can see, most of the endpoints are calling the metrics endpoint, um, I won't really have enough data to show you exactly what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this test.json file over here, which is a very simple K6 performance test, but it's more of a smoke test to just generate some traffic so we can take a look at what we have after. I'm going to run this for a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and run K6 run test.js and I'm going to generate some fake data and one out of every thousand requests I think here will also throw an exception so we should have a good variation of successful requests and maybe a few unsuccessful requests yeah and as you can see one of them did in fact fail so let's wait for a minute for me a minute for you just a millisecond and let's take a look what we have at the end of this test so the test has now completed we had two exceptions we should be able to see them in the dashboard so i'm going to go back here hit refresh and then we can immediately see some of the error rate over here 0.02 percent in fact some of the traffic over here, the distribution between uh, percentiles and how long they take and things like current connections. So we did peak at 100 and maybe two, yes, and two open connections. Those were the performance test and the constant scraping that's going on. And then you can see the HTTPS over here. You can see which endpoints fail. So in this case, the weather city endpoint, and you can see the successful one or the top requested endpoints as well. And if we click on this, because we have this other endpoint dashboard, we can actually see more details. So for example, the type of exception that occurred, how many requests, the status, the status for 500 as well over here, which my face should be hiding. So let me just move it around and so on. So this will give you a nice way to get started. And if you want to search for things like post requests, other routes, you can have that all nice and customizable as well. Now, if you want me to make a dedicated Grafana video showing you how you can build all this from scratch, then please leave a comment down below. I want to keep this video just on the metrics themselves. So now we have scraping and we have dashboards. But what I want to do is I want to see how we can actually have our own custom metrics in here, because all that is just built in through a package. But what if I want to, for example, select how many times a city is being requested? Well, I can actually do that with, again, a new thing that was added in .NET 8 about metrics. What you want to do is go here and say builder.services.add metrics over here. And once you do that, you'll be able to inject in your classes the private read-only iMeter factory. So let's go ahead and inject that. And once you have that, you can go ahead and do things like this. You can say meter factory dot create and you can create a meter and we can give it a name over here. So I'm going to call that weather 
app. And if you want, by the way, you can use the overload that uses meter options. And this won't only allow you to provide the name, but it will allow you to provide a bunch of other things like tags, version, uh, scope, and so on. This is getting a bit too advanced, so I'm not going to go that deep. So I'm just going to say whether app over here or whether API even. And once I have the meter, I can go ahead and say instrument over here equals meter dot create. And I can create a histogram, a counter, up, down counter. So something that increases and decreases, uh, like the connections, for example, I can have an observable counter, a gauge, you can have different things. I'm going to create a simple counter over here to count the uh, weather request. So I'm going to create the city counter request over here. Now you can do many fancy things with providing tags and so on. I'm just going to leave it very, very simple. And I'm going to say instrument dot add, and I'm going to add once. So the city was requested once and so on. Now, just creating the meter in here won't actually be enough to expose it. What you want to do is you're going to go to the name of the meter over here. So you want to grab the weather API and we want to go over here to the add meter and we want to add it using the name we used over here to be able to expose it. Otherwise, it won't really work. So remember to add it using the add meter method as well. And now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and just restart all the applications in Docker and I will run the exact same sort of fake smoke test. So that should be running over here. Yes, it is running. And I'm going to go ahead and just run the test for a minute and see what we get back. So requests are now done. We had a few exceptions. So let's go ahead and take a look at Grafana this time. So I'll go to the Explore tab and I should be able to search for city counter. You can see it over here. And if I say run query, you can see all the city counter requests over here, 5,703. And those are all driven by that thing that I added over here. So I said, create a counter, increase it, and then go ahead and expose it. This is a very fast view to what is coming. And I'm sure we're going to get more and more of those. And if you want a more in-depth video on Prometheus, Grafana, or how to make pretty dashboards, then please leave a comment down below. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.